And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at a small little game called Dice Topia. Now, Dice Topia is a game in which you draft dice. I think it's some sort of futuristic thing here. A quick strategic board game with heaps of variety about snatching shiny dice loot, taking over neighborhoods, and completing sneaky missions. So this is a game in which you are going to be essentially drafting dice and putting them on your board. It's a pretty quick game on here. It says 20 to 30 minutes. That's pretty accurate. Here's how it plays. Each player is going to get a little board that has all their agents on it here. There's going to be a bunch of purple, blue, and white dice that are rolled and put onto this board randomly. At the beginning of the game, each player is going to draw three mission cards and pick two of them to keep. You're then going to start the game. It's possible if you want to, you can play with one of these scenario cards, which will change your role to the game. Each player also has a special ability on the character that they've picked. So on my turn, I'm going to pick one of these dice. I want this six blue, for example, and put my red marker there, put the blue die on my board. I then get to take the special action of the board, of the row that I just put my token in. What do the special actions do? The agency lets you draw a new mission card and then discard one in case you don't like the ones you have. The Goo Goo Air Force here lets you reroll a die anywhere on the board or on your faction board or someone else's faction board. The waste management lets you switch an agent here in a neighborhood with a die in another neighborhood. So I might say, oh, I'm gonna go over here and put this like this. The Twilight Congress lets you switch dice between two spots in these neighborhoods. The Observational Bank lets you switch a die in a neighborhood with a die on a faction board. You no longer have a six, now you have a three. And the Neville Syndicate here lets you swap the place between two dice on faction boards. So you have a faction board with a white five. I'm going to take that white five and give you the purple three. When everyone has placed all these, at that point, you will take a look at all the dice that you have gathered. You will add together their pips. That's going to be your score. Uh, you're also going to look at your missions. So, for example, let's see if I accomplish my missions. This one gives me 14 points if I have the lowest total dice value on my faction board. Let's pretend I did it. Nope. Four po points for each pair of dice values. Well, I have two twos, and I have two fours, and two fives. So this one here is worth 12 points. Nice. And eight if I have dice of all colors. I do, but I don't even know how I had three cards. I should have only had two anyway. So those are going to be added to your special, into your points at the end of the game. Then we're going to see who controls each of the neighborhoods. Whoever has the most agents in any particular neighborhood is going to get five points plus the value if there's any leftover dice in that neighborhood. So for example, this is five plus six, that gives me 11. And whoever has the most points is the winner of the game. What's this? What's this? It's a really horrible board. Ah, this one goes from 1 to 10, then shoots over here. That's terrible. Let's look at the other side. Snaking my way through. Oh, neither one of those is good, and they both look like... Oh, I don't like that scoreboard at all. The artwork's okay, I guess. I mean, it's some futuristic artwork here, and it does tell you what they all do, so it's nice that each player has that. The mission cards make sense. The board itself, though... I don't know if you can see from here, but the white dice are pretty difficult to read. Underneath some of the dice it says four. That means if you're playing with less than four players, you wouldn't put a die in that particular spot. The components for this game are okay. They're, they have this dystopian future thing going on, but it's really dark, and the whole thing doesn't come across as very good components. They're, they're okay. Whoa. Not a big fan of this game at all. Dystopia. <sighs> I like the concept of Dystopia, and I was pretty excited about playing it, but there are several problems. One, the components, which I already showed you. Two, the missions. I have a big problem with the missions. Some of the missions are clearly better than others. For example, a die that gives you 
I think like seven points for every one net you get. Well, that's pretty good. Uh, I'll, I'll give me three ones and I just got 21 points. Now granted, ones aren't that good to begin with. And then there's one that gives you 12 points if you have no ones. One of those is way easier for other players to mess up than the other. They also have this really weird thing. So uh, I think if you each one is worth nine points, I think that's how it worked, or maybe eight points, something like that. So they, they said the twos were worth seven, the threes are worth six. Okay, that makes sense, they all come together. The fives were worth four, and then the sixes were also worth four on that mission card. Why are sixes better than fives? Sixes, it just, I didn't like that, and then you mix that with those special abilities. So you're trying to control neighborhoods. That's interesting. So I'm going to pick a high die, hopefully, that helps me meet one of my missions, hopefully, and then I want to control that neighborhood, hopefully. And then the neighborhood says, switch any two dice. Switch these two things in the board. It's crazy. You're like, I'll do this. And now you no longer have that. Oh, great. I'm so glad I was working on that mission because you just messed it over. This is like a take that game, but with drafting. What? Did no one when they're playing it say, this isn't fun? Well, maybe it is fun for people, but it is definitely not fun for me. Uh, the, the redeeming quality of this game is it's fast. But those missions, you get them, you're like, all right, I'll try to do these, and then hope someone else doesn't mess you up, because why would they not? If I can switch a die between your two players' boards, I'll gladly do so. I hope it messes you both up, because that's how I'm going to win if you don't accomplish your missions. The area controls also, because there's so few spots, you end up with so many ties all over the place, and the, the, you're like, you get the points of the dice that are left over, but most of the time people are taking sixes and fives and fours anyway. It just felt like, ooh, here's an interesting idea, but it is not a good game. Then it looks kind of amateurish too, right? But I'm okay. You know, I can bypass that if there's a really cool game inside here. This seems like there's a beginning of a good idea. But that good idea is all there is. The game itself, not fun. Way too random. I want. I like the fact that there's air control and dice drafting. This is not how to combine the two of them. Dice Tower Judgment, super random!